Saturday was the scene of the latest encounter in the 2022 Honda British uh, Talent Honda Cup. Talent and away went Johnny Garnett, number 57, Cup. the championship leader from pole position. And also a champion elect this weekend. There is drama though into the complex. Harrison Desoy hits the back of his teammate Julian Correa. Ollie Walker was caught up in that and had to evacuate onto the grass. But what a shame for Harrison Desoy out of the race after contact with a teammate for the second race in a row, would you believe? Reed Stevenson fresh from his two podiums, his two second places at Silverstone at the Grand Prix support meeting last weekend, was right up there again, fighting with none other than Johnny Garness for the win. But later in the race, Garness had pulled away and it was Carter Brown with a fresh engine on board, fighting with Stevenson for that second place. Big moment for Evan Belford through the complex and Manny Brinton went through to take that fourth place. Crosby was in there as well. But over the line goes Johnny Garness for another glorious win. It's his ninth of the season and it puts him in a potential your title winning position. So this is it, a sweltering afternoon, a huge crowd here at Thruxton in Hampshire in South East England and we're ready for a potential title decider. It would be the first title to be won at the Bennett's British Superbike Championship in 2022 if it happens this afternoon. But this is the latest race in the Honda British Talent Cup. Let's have a look at the top six on the grid with the Geordie Torres helmet there for Harrison Crosby, the 16 year old from Ashford in Kent, middle of Row two, one of two riders who can win the championship this year. It will be won by the MLAV Vision Track Academy. That's official. This is Carter Brown, the 15-year-old from Bridgewater in Somerset. And he does have the pace to win. He made a mistake on the last lap yesterday. Just to his left is the rider from Grendon in Warwickshire, 15-year-old Evan Belford. His dad reckons he needs to be more aggressive in the first two laps to keep up with the leaders because his pace is good. Front row. Number 84, 14 years of age, the Belgian-born Dutch rider now living in Valencia, Matt Rousbrook, who's really going well. He is the rider who's already won nine races so far this season from Ilfra Coombe in Devon. Number four, uh, 14 years of age, number 57, Johnny Garnes. Could he win the championship this afternoon? We'll talk about that in a second, because if he's going to do it, the easiest way would be to win the race, and that would mean overhauling 16-year-old Reece Stevenson from Skegness, who, courtesy of his fastest lap on Saturday, has sealed the pole position on Sunday. Taylor McKenzie and Greg Haynes are with you. Taylor, national superstock champion here in the UK in 2016. Look at those track temperatures now of over 40 degrees Celsius. So if Johnny Garness wins this race and Carter Brown is off the podium, Johnny Garness is the champion this afternoon. It might not happen today. Who knows? Yeah, it's not going to be easy for him, um, having Carter, obviously, he's been very fast and very consistent this year. Uh, so, not easy. It's bizarre that it's crept up on us this quickly. I couldn't believe it yesterday when you told me he could actually win the championship this weekend. So, yeah, he's obviously gunning for that. He needs to win the race and, and think about nothing else. But if it doesn't happen today, it's looking more and more likely as the year goes on. Definitely, definitely is. And even if he doesn't win it here today, then surely he'll be wrapping it up at Snetterton next time out. Just two rounds left for the Talent Cup in 2022. A double header at Snetterton on the 300 layout and then the Grand Prix circuit at Donington Park on the first weekend of October. Away we go then on a warm-up lap. But not being allowed to use tyre warmers on the grid, is it any wonder when the track temperature is 40 degrees Celsius? And we've even seen some of these Moto3 bikes sliding, haven't we, with the track temps here? Yeah, it's not something you see often in Moto3, but yesterday with the hotter temperatures, this track is really, really abrasive as well, and it was catching a few of them out. They were having a few little slides. It's great to see on Moto3 bikes because it's not normally something that we're used to seeing. And uh, yeah, looking forward to more of it today. So, Garnes wins this title today if he leaves Thruxton with a lead of 100 points or more, because that would mean Carter Brown could equal him if he won the last four races and Johnny didn't score, but Johnny would have already won more races no matter what happened. So, 100 points or more. Easiest way to do that today is by winning the race with Carter Brown off the podium. Keanu Vai is out of action with a broken foot after a crash in qualifying, and Stevenson is really now attacking Vaya and Desoy for third in the championship. Let's see if Reese can get up into the top three. Here's the grid. Fastest laps of Saturday. Stevenson, Garnett, champion elect, and Rousebrook are alongside. Then it's Belford, and directly behind Johnny Garnett, his teammate, the only other rider, Carter Brown, who could win the championship. Watch out for Manny Brinton as well, the half British, half Ethiopian rider from seventh on the grid, who got his first finish here on Saturday in sixth place, following those two unforced errors, which took him out of second place in both races, can you believe? Last time out at Brands Hatch. Harley McCabe, he was unlucky yesterday, had to pull into the pit lane with a problem, but had a really strong result with two thirds last weekend at the Silverstone Grand Prix support meeting. So his confidence is up, the rider from Halifax. I'm really, 
really keen here, though, to see what Reece Stevenson in particular can do, because if ever he's got a chance to win his first race, and here he is, this is it, surely. Yeah, the beginning of yesterday, hung on to Johnny really well and was roughing him up at points and looking to challenge for the win. He dropped off in the middle part of the race, so uh, I'm not quite sure why that was. Carter eventually got past him, and, yeah, it'll be... Uh, I think he just, if he can sit in the slipstream with Johnny, try and hang on rather than uh, thinking about passing him um, and pulling himself away from the pack would be better. Are we going to see the championship decided this afternoon? We find out when the red lights go out, which they do, and Stevenson cuts straight across. Garness has to take avoiding action. Gives him a cheeky look as well as he passes him to take the lead. But Garness is in a tighter winning position, but there's a long way to go. Carter Brown at the moment is off the podium. He desperately needs to be inside this top three to have any chance of taking the tighter race to Snetterton. And he's already attacking. Look, he's right behind Belford. He's taken Belford. He's up into third position. He's got Stevenson ahead of him now. Johnny Garness is threatening to do disappear off at the road and this man Carter Brown number 74 on the white bike up to third is not prepared to allow that to happen he was a man on a mission there into that chicane it was great I wasn't expecting to go all the way up to third but yeah great pass at this early stage of the race he needs to uh, do that to not let Johnny get away well, back in 1951, Jeff Duke, that year's 500cc world champion, came here to Thruxton and he was beaten by a young upstart in that race who went by the name of John Surtees. And those legends of the past would be proud of what Garnes has done so far this season as they fly through Church Corner for the first time on the opening lap here at Thruxton. Look at them through there. It's a scary, scary place at the best of times as Lucas Brown now attacks Matt Rousebrook, who's not had the best of starts, the Dutch rider, from the front row of the grid. Harrison Crosby on the yellow bike there on the right side Manny Brinton is attacking as well with the turquoise fairing look at him trying to go right around the outside be careful not to cut the club chicane they'll be given a one second penalty at least if not a two second penalty as we've seen in earlier races today already but look this is bad news for Carter Brown Belford's gone through yeah it, and the thing Carter struggled with a little bit yesterday was the group split up like this and because he's a bigger rider it's not easy for him out the back section where the track's a lot faster Johnny's obviously got an advantage being a lot lighter as he Slides up the inside oh. there, it was a great pass again. It's the second lap in a row he's done that, isn't it? Taylor straight through on the inside of the complex. However, all he's not lost for Carter Brown because his pace in the closing stages was strong, wasn't it, yesterday? I just wonder whether he can do that again this afternoon. At the moment, at the moment, the championship would go to Snetterton just. It would be about two points that Garnes would need when we get to Snetterton in Norfolk next time out. You can see how much taller Carter Brown is, can't you, with the elbows out of it? Ben Spees-ish as he comes round the quick right-handers of Noble and Village and up to Church now. It was difficult to know yesterday if Johnny was controlling the race or Carter was actually faster than him in the last section yeah. of the race because he was lap times were consistently there or thereabouts with Johnny's, but Johnny obviously Ooh. had an advantage. See Crosby's front end there. Yeah, that was... It's tricky through church. You go through that really fast corner. You just, I think on these bikes, you'll quickly get off the throttle and back on it again. But there's a bit of a bump. And if you cross that bump with the throttle open or closed, it can uh, upset the bike. And that's what happened there. Lucas Brown's looking really race as well. The fourth rider on the train on the left-hand side of the screen, just behind Crosby, yeah, on the Banks racing machine. And then you've got the rest of them. Sullivan Mounsey is in at the moment, 10th place with the bright yellow helmet. Brinton's just been passed by Rousebrook, as you can see for yourself. And what's Brinton going to do now as we come out of Allard? He's definitely going to have a go at the inside. This 13-year-old who debuted a couple of rounds ago at Brands Hatch and made a massive, massive impression despite the crashes. Crosby's making a big impression now. Takes two for one, and he goes through. This is so similar to yesterday's race, though. The leader's already escaping, and a four-way strap going on behind them. Yeah, Johnny's really putting the hammer down at the front. Just set the fastest lap of the race. He's already stretched the advantage to a second at the front. It's not going to be easy for Carter to bridge that gap. He's 1.4 behind Johnny. So, yeah, not easy when he, he does make these starts and gets away now. So 98 points if it stays like this with Garnes winning and Brown third. The championship would go on just to Snetterton. He'd need two points, as we said before. Next time out, but look at this. Brenton, uh, Brenton really having a go, and Rouse Brooks right in the mix there. Here's Garnes in the meantime, then, like you say, 122 1, fastest lap of the race so far. And there is Carter Brown again, side by side with last year's championship runner up, Evan Belford, whose season was really wrecked with the broken leg he had in that crash, that really unfortunate crash. He went down at Silverstone in the very opening round of the season and was hit by Garnes, who was right behind him and had nowhere to go. Came back to Knock Hill. Really strong win at Knock Hill for Belfort, but obviously way, way, way out of title contention. 
so far this season. And Reece Stevenson, interestingly, that time, Taylor, was a tad quicker. He was a tenth quicker than Garnes. The lead at the moment is 0.9, as we see, again, this fight going on. Can Brinton do anything about Crosby? But Brinton's been really strong, hasn't he, so far this year? This is only his fourth Talent Cup race. He's racing in Spain as well. He's a member of the Montmartre Competition, Estrella Galicia Academy. And he means business, he's going someplace, I think. Definitely, uh, Brands Hatch was very, very impressive. Brands isn't an easy track to come to uh, and be fast straight away like that. And he, he was really impressive. He nearly took it to Johnny. Unfortunately, crashed out on the last lap uh, in the first race. And was it the last lap as well? In the yeah, second? It was yeah, bizarre. It was. Uh, I'm not quite sure what happened there. Um, but yeah, proving himself to be a fast rider. And again, at Froxton backing it up currently. Yeah. Born in West Sussex in uh, Worthing back in 2008. His dad's from Brighton originally, and uh, he spent a lot of time growing up in Brighton, but his mum actually from Ethiopia. So they're very proud to be flying the Ethiopian flag here in the paddock as well. And in the meantime, now, Reece Stevenson's been caught. Carter Brown in the middle, Evan Belford on the red bike on the left-hand side. And this is critical stuff for the championship this year. You just don't know what can happen in the last two rounds. Carter Brown has got to capitalise. He's up to second, but never mind second. Can he do what he did yesterday and actually start to close in on his teammate? Stevenson then now drops back from second to fourth. I, I do have to say Johnny's been very, very impressive this year and really stepped his riding up, but Carter is equally impressive. It's not easy being a bigger guy like he is in this class with not a lot of horsepower and he, um, he was a really neat little rider. I think when he does eventually get onto bigger bikes, he's going to find it a little bit easier. It's um, especially a track like this. Now he's at the front, he's just going to be losing time all the time whilst he's at the front. Well, at the moment, the championship would go on. This is lap 5 of 14 here at Thruxton. Round the really quick right-handers at the back of the track. They've come through Noble. This is Goodwood now, and then Village, named after Thruxton Village itself, which is just off behind our camera here, and then Church Corner. The Thruxton Church, literally just a few hundred metres behind where these cameras are. Look at Stevenson coming back. This, obviously, though, is wonderful news for the leader, Johnny Garnett, because all of this fighting is allowing the Ilfrican rider to pull away Carter Brown. That was adventurous. <laughs> I don't know what to say. <laughs> it's so, so fast at church. For anyone that's never ridden around here, I can't honestly explain what it feels like as you get to there. And yeah, it's, it's like watching a speedway race with these guys. There's no one line looks faster than the other. And it's uh, yeah, great to watch. Uh, Taylor did a double take there. You were literally lost for words. But it's like he went off the track and just reappeared from the right hand side. I, I quickly looked down at my notes as Carter had just been passed. And then when I looked back up, he was back at the front again. I wasn't <laughs> quite sure what had happened, but very, very impressive oh, to ride around the outside there. I don't know how he did that, but anyway, he did. The problem is they're now three seconds behind Johnny Garness on lap six of 14. There's Belford on the red bike, number 52, third place. Then it's Stevenson. What's happening for the back? Crosby, Brinton, Rousebrook, Lucas Brown, Clayton Edmonds, who made a big improvement last time out at Silverstone, he's ninth. Josh Bannister is 10th. Then it's Correa, Mounsey, Walker, McKay and McCabe in the top 15. Lap six of 14 here at Thruxton, and it's as you were. Look at this, three abreast almost as we come down towards the fastest corner in the country. It's Church Corner at Thruxton, and Evan Belford this time makes it stick. Carter Brown's gone around the outside for the second lap in a row, and he's in third place. But if he finishes at the back of this train and Johnny Garness wins the race, the championship is decided here at Thruxton in Garness's favour this afternoon. And I guess Stevenson and Belford know that Carter Brown's got to think about the championship. They just want podium finishes. Garness, in the meantime, was 2.9 seconds up the road when they came over the line last time round, and surely it's increased with these three now continuing their battle. 4.1! They lost well over a second, Taylor McKenzie, on that lap alone. Right up until these, these last two laps where they've been battling, they've been more or less matching Johnny's pace. He broke them at the start, but always only 0 0.1, 0 0.2 faster. And yeah, it's amazing to see what a difference it makes battling like this. Every time they get to a chicane and one of them passes the other one and one runs a little bit wide, it's just, you're just losing time all the time. And then especially these corners where they lead out onto a faster section on these smaller bikes. If you come out two, three kilometers an hour slower, you're costing yourself time the whole, whole way down these straights. Well, Garnes, there he was, just going through the frame. He's not been in this position before. He did make a mistake, if you remember, from the lead and crashed out of one of the races at Knock Hill earlier this season. It left him in tears, but I think he's learned a lot from that. There's what a lead of four and a half seconds looks like. Carter Brown looks across 
at Evan Bralford. This must be so frustrating, though, for Carter Brown. There's not much he can do. He was almost on the white line there as he tipped it into church. Yeah, it's quite high risk, the riding around the outside, because the track tightens up in a lot of these places. You get out onto the dirty part of the track as well. And the other thing that happens when you do end up on the wide part is you have to carry a lot bigger distance so if you imagine a running track where you're right running around the outside it's a, a lot more distance to travel and he keeps losing out because of that i think oh and is he just feeling the pressure of the occasion now as well stevenson's gone around the outside as brown loses momentum he ran wide going into the chicane loses momentum coming out of the chicane there's some penalties going out further back number 76 charlie huntingford's been given the dreaded two second time penalty for cutting across the club chicane and as you can see on that graphic at the bottom of the screen 101 would be too much for carter brown we say it again if you're just joining us if carter brown on the white bike number 74 finishes behind these two the championship is over garness would be the 2022 champion this afternoon here at thruxton can stevenson and belford fighting save Carter Brown's bike and the problem is of course he's going to go to Snetterton and Johnny Garnes is only going to need a couple of points anyway but you just never know do you? It's nice to keep the championship exciting Greg isn't it? Yeah. Even we'll just yeah I mean it's looking quite inevitable that Johnny's going to win the championship one way or another but it's never over till it's over there's still four races left anything can happen after this I do think there's no way Carter is going to let these two finish in front of him if he has the chance at the last chicane he's very strong on the brakes there and he'll be doing everything he can to get past them Some great news as well confirmed at the grand prix last weekend that uh, motorsport vision racing and dawner sports have refreshed the deal they've extended the deal for another three years up to and including 2025 for their partnership on the road to moto gp program and there is carter brown he's back up into third place look at the squabbling behind tell you what, if they're not careful, they're going to back themselves into the four behind them. They're all coming. Crosby, Brinton, Rousebrook, Lucas Brown. If they're not careful, it's going to be a multiple scrap soon for second all the way down to eighth place. If Carter Brown's life wasn't already complicated enough, it's about to get even worse. Rousebrook did his fastest lap of the race there. He's 0.6 faster than the guys in front. So, yeah, they're going to be on them very quickly. And that does make it a lot trickier for Carter. If there's a big bunch like this, anything can happen on the last lap. Look at that, a second and a half, like you say, on the last lap alone. There they all are in the background. They know they're catching them. Garnes, in the meantime, now leads by just shy of six seconds. I wonder what the pit board's going to be saying for Carter Brown at this point of the proceedings. The only thing he can do is get ahead of this guy, Reece Stevenson, ahead of him. Reece Stevenson, what an absolutely amazing improvement he's made over the last few rounds. Look at the lead for Garnes. Sunday afternoon's ride at Thruxton, and then in the background you can just see the front wheel of Matt Rousebrook in fifth place. They're going to catch them, and they're going to catch them soon. This is Church. Crosby now is back ahead of Rousebrook and up into fifth place in this race. Brinton's in there, then it's Lucas Brown. In fact, Rousebrook's fallen back now to the back of the pack in the top of the picture. Red bike in eighth place. Here's the club chicane. Oh, it must be so frustrating now for Carter Brown. He knows Garnes is up the road. I, I guess they knew, didn't they, Taylor, that it was going to be very, very difficult to beat Johnny Garnes this afternoon. And with all these other guys making progress now further back in the pack, it's making life even more difficult for Carter. Out go the pit boards, the only means of communication there in bike racing between the teams and the riders. I don't know how they have time to look across, to be honest. I just love watching younger class racing when you see the angry dads on the wall, all the <laughs> mad marks screaming and shouting at them. Because it obviously makes you go a lot, lot faster when your dad's angry over the wall. I was just going to say, luckily you don't have an angry dad, do you? So no, that's never a problem for never you. Never seen him. What I do hear, by the way, a little birdie tells us that Johnny Garnett has a bit of a girlfriend now. So does that make you quicker or slower as a rider? Well, it's a dangerous game to play, but it's <laughs> so far so good. So I bring it on. Yeah, well, no wonder he's so confident. He's just turned 14 as well, and he's now... See, oh, oh, Carter Brown has a huge moment. You can see the MLAB Vision Track Academy there watching on at the top of the screen with MLAB himself here at Thruxton this afternoon. They are the champions this year. They know they are. It will be Garnett or Carter Brown, whatever happens. But just talk us through this, Taylor. Carter Brown's moment. Yeah, he's in there a little bit wide. This is what I was talking about earlier on the dirty part. There's a big bump there. And because he's out wide or he's on parts of the track, he's not ridden before, and, and that bump just unsettled him. The one thing that is making me wince slightly is into this last chicane. He's so late on the brakes. There's big, if you look at his front tyre, it's moving the whole way in and chattering. And it's only because he's trying so hard and braking so late and the fork's completely bottomed out and he's on the front tyre and the front tyre is squirming. 
but doing an incredible job to keep forcing his way back into second place. And here comes the pack behind, Crosby, Brinton, Rousebrook, Lucas Brown, they're all lapping quicker than they have in the whole race so far. They've obviously done a better job of conserving their tyres than these three, as you know, we've seen them the whole race, have been scrapping so, so, so hard. 6.3 seconds up the lead is Johnny Garnes, four laps to go, and now they are nearly right with them. It's just a few bike lengths, and they still have another three laps after this, Taylor. This is going to be a titanic scrap, but how's this going to pan out for Carter Brown? That chicane alone there, they cost themselves a lot of time. Reese did a, a big, strong move on Carter, and then they kind of fought it out for the next two corners. And all the time they're doing that, the group behind is closing in. It, to me, it could end up being a, a last lap roll of the dice, who ends up in, at the front when they arrive at the last chicane. Carter will be strong on the brakes, um, but yeah, it definitely adds oh. a different element to it. And what must Crosby be thinking on the yellow bike? He can see them three wide ahead of him, and now they are with them. They have officially caught them. Wow, that gap was over two seconds not so long ago, and it's evaporated. Here's your situation. Garnes disappears off into the sunset, seven seconds ahead of the rest of the field. Belford is second. Carty Brown cannot afford to lose another position to keep this alive. You've got Nathan Smith and Jordan Pritchard, Michael Laverty, all the team watching on down on the pit wall. They don't know at the moment whether they're going to be celebrating the title this afternoon, and if it's not today, it'll almost certainly be next time out at Snetterton. Here they all are, Michael Laverty himself, of course, a 10-time race winner in the British Superbike Championship. So very much feels like he's coming home, I'm sure, this weekend. Three laps to go, and what is going to happen? Are they going to have their championship win this afternoon? They're actually on for a 1-2 at the moment, their second of the weekend. Carter, do you think he knows they're all right behind now, or is he just thinking it's Stevenson and Belford? And Crosby, for the first time, goes through and takes Stevenson. Yeah, Stevenson had a good look on the straight. I think he's aware that there's more guys coming, but Carter is just doing everything he can to get his head down. If he can rack off the laps they were doing at the start of the race, he does have the pace to pull away. But with all this fighting going on, it's helped the group behind close up. Yeah, his last lap was a 1.23.8, so it was nearly a full second slower than Garnett again at the front and uh, a little bit so than Belford as well behind him. What is quite useful, look, is that Stevenson is holding the rest of them up and it's allowed uh, Belford and Carter Brown to just eke out a few bike lengths there. Look, nine, 10 bike lengths perhaps as they come through Church Corner, but again, Carter Brown runs a bit wide. Oh, this is gonna be, this is gonna be difficult to watch. It must be mixed emotions in some ways for the team, but it's looking good, isn't it? Yeah, um, it's been an incredible year for the team. A lot of wins this year, and either way, they're going to clinch the championship with one of the riders. But yeah. Carter, he's a hard charger, and he's not going to give up that easily. It's great to watch him. And uh, oh! <laughs> Oh, that was so lucky. That was so lucky in so many ways. Matt Rousebrook out of the race, but Lucas Brown could so easily have collected him there. I hope Matt Rousebrook is OK. And are we going to see a delay to the race? Are we going to see any stoppage? We'll keep you posted. But look at this in the meantime, because this is absolutely critical for the championship this year. As Carter Brown's coming under a massive attack, Stevenson somehow has closed in. He's caught Belford. He's passed Belford. And now he's attacking Carter Brown for second place as they come through Campbell Cobb and Seagrave. Then it's Crosby on the yellow bike and Manny Brinton with the blue flashes on his bike. Lucas Brown's dropped right back because he nearly got caught up in the incident with Rousebrook. I don't know whether a red flag is out. The red flag is out and this championship goes on to Snetterton. Next time out, is Matt Rousebrook OK? That is our only concern at the moment. He's got the stretcher here at Thruxton. There was a big incident there. I don't know whether he made contact with another rider or whether he clipped the curb, which is so easily done coming through the club chicane. But it does mean with two thirds distance already passed, we do have a completion of the race. We do have a 10th win of the season from 14 races. Another double for Johnny Garnett. But this championship goes on to Snetterton next time out. Wow, that was in some ways an easy ride for Garnett, but he must have been nervous in the back of his mind. Oh, I could see him there just coming down the back straight. All he was doing is looking behind to see where Carter yeah. was, but unfortunately he's still there for him. Wow, what a ride, but the championship goes on. So into the pits, he will come. We were comfortably past the two-thirds cutoff in the end. It was lap 13 we were on, and the two-thirds cutoff was the end of lap nine. Had it been any earlier than that, then they would have restarted the races from where they were at the end of the last full lap. But what a race, what tension, and the championship just about is still alive. There he is with the shark teeth helmet, 
Do you think he thought in his mind, I might win this today? It was difficult, wasn't it? Because it was, there was every chance Carter would get a podium, Taylor, and he did, to be fair. But look, shrug of the shoulders. You can tell he's a bit disappointed there. He knew it was possible today. It's funny how far Johnny's come. He's just won the race by 7.6 seconds, and he comes in <laughs> a bit miffed that he's not won the championship. But yeah, it goes on to Statterton, but it's looking... Oh, it's good to see he's oh, up that's there. Good news. Yeah, that is good news indeed. Not just lucky to avoid injury from the initial hit down on the ground and then into the barrier, but not to be ridden over by Lucas Brown as well, who must have done a phenomenal job to avoid him. That's seven on the bounce now for Johnny Garnes. Seven victories in succession. He threw one at, well, he won at Donington National, then he was on for another one when he crashed out of the, the lead, a silly mistake at Knock Hill, and ever since he's won Knock Hill, then a double at Brands, then a double at Silverstone, and now a double here at Thruxton as well. Taylor, we've talked so much, haven't we, through the season about the difference in height between the two, and there's a clear example of it there. Carter Brown on the left, Garnet in front of us. Racing in Spain as well. And all these guys, all these guys are so important to me. His dad, Tom, and Jordan Pritchard from the team as well, the team manager. Michael Laverty, of course, is here this weekend, and Nathan Smith as well. Well, what a race, as I'm sure Johnny Garnes will be telling Larry Carter here for BSB Radio and everyone listening at the circuit. It's a big crowd here at Thruxton this afternoon. So the red light panels are flashing for the red flag, but thankfully Matt Rousebrook was OK and on his feet after that scary moment through the club chicane. Garnes wins. That's seven wins in a row, three consecutive doubles and 10 victories from 14 races. Carter Brown keeps the title alive. Just Belford on the podium. Stevenson knocked off the podium from Crosby, Brinton. Lucas Brown, phenomenal avoidance in the crash there from Clayton Edmonds, McKay and Walker completing the top 10. Then it was Josh Bannister and Sullivan Mounsey from Julian Curea, who's had a difficult weekend here but lost a load of laps yesterday with the collision when he was hit by his teammates Harrison Desoy. Harley McKay's picked up two points and Dan Goodman as well one of the other MLAV riders just ahead of his teammate Peter Willis who was suffering yesterday with overheating suspension. So Johnny Garnes needed a 100 point lead to wrap up the title today that hasn't happened with his teammate Carter Brown finishing second. So it goes on to Snetterton next time out. It's very, very likely it will be decided at Snetterton and not on the Grand Prix circuit at Donington Park. But this is motorcycle racing. You never quite know. And that's why Carter Brown needs to just keep pushing. So four races to go and it's Garnes 94 ahead of Carter Brown. It's looking rather good for Snetterton next time out. Stevenson has managed to grab that third place coming into the race weekend. He was down in fifth place in the championship. Poor weekend for Desoy and Viaya was injured and not racing. So up to third goes Reece Stevenson. Rasbrook is eighth after that lucky escape at the end of race two. Belford creeping up the order as well after missing a handful of races earlier on in the season as Manny Brinton now moves up into the championship top 20. What a star performer in his four races so far. Johnny Garnes, another win then. You just make racing look so easy at the moment. How much have you enjoyed this season? Yeah, it's been a great season so far. Um, yeah, I come home with 94 points in front of Carter. So yeah, really happy with this win. Uh, double win this weekend. And yeah, just couldn't really get any better really. 10 wins in a row. No, not a row, but yeah, just 10 wins. But yeah, I'm mind blown. It's amazing. We've got a little bit of a gap now, haven't we, before Snetterton, and that's hopefully where you can wrap up this season and take the title. What is the plan now, between now and then? What will you do as an individual, as a team? I generally not too sure. I think when I get home, just focus on my training. Yeah, do a lot of training when I get home and be all prepared and ready for Snetterton. And what do you think that will look like? And have you got, come on, you've got to tell me now, ahead of Snetterton, will you have any celebrations lined up? Have you dared to dream yet? If you were going to lift the title, what would you do with your team? Well, I think we'll have to see what happens. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a big celebration, that's for sure. Not really giving anything away there, Johnny Garnes, but cannot wait to see what you do at Snetterton. Congratulations once again. Thank you. It's not easy to get away with it with Rachel Stringer. She tried her very best, though, but he's being very coy, isn't he? Taylor, just talk us through this one for Matt Rouse. But, oh, oh, yes, straight line the corner, didn't he? Yeah, he looked, probably got a little bit wide in the left. And then the curbs, when you do hit them on the uh, side of them, you end up on a big jump, basically, and that's what he's hit. 
lucky to see that he's okay and walking into the ambulance there. Yes, hopefully this is just precautionary, but like you say, he's walking himself and uh, Heike Roma, the uh, doctor here at BSB, whose birthday it is coming up this week, so an early happy birthday to Heike, but that's really good news that Matt Rasbrook clearly winded and, and in some pain there, but at least he was able to uh, get himself unaided to the ambulance. The stretcher was put there briefly, but he managed to get his breath back and into the ambulance and he'll be checked out, of course at the medical centre, but the podium is underway. Evan Belford, he rode well there, didn't he, Taylor? He was right up there with Carter Brown and Reece Stevenson and resolutely grabbed that second place. Carter Brown, that must have been tricky to deal with, knowing the championship was over if he was behind Stevenson and Belford. Uh, but Garnett, there's just no stopping the guy, is there? No, this is my highlight of the weekend, looking at Carter stood on the second <laughs> stand, <laughs> still being taller than Johnny. But yeah, Johnny's putting it together an amazing season, as is Carter and um, Belford as well. They've done amazingly well, both really consistent over the last few races and still keeping the championship alive. But Johnny really is becoming the class of the field. He's um, really clicked with his vision track and um, that academy bike. And yeah, really, really impressive. Just very quickly, how's the World Championship going? Silverstone last weekend, another really decent result there. Austria next time. Yeah, it's very exciting for us too. We're uh, looking forward to the rest of the season. Plenty more races to come. Cheers, Taylor. What a weekend for Johnny Garness. Another double, but the championship is still alive in the Honda British Talent Cup. Well, it's easy to say it, but all Johnny Garness had to do at Thruxton on Sunday was to win the second of the two Talent Cup races with his teammate Carter Brown off the podium to win the title this season. He looks across at Reece Stevenson who darts in front of him from pole position but Garnes was away and they would not see him for the rest of this race. Following in the footsteps of Jeff Duke and John Surtees who've raced here at Thruxton in the past. So we had a three-way scrap with Garnes up the road, might as well have evaporated from the race. Look how massive that lead was. The three race back was Reece Stevenson, number 23, Carter Brown, number 74, and then Evan Belford, number 52. Big moment for Carter Brown, but in the end, they were caught by a four way scrap behind them, and Stevenson lost out. So Carter Brown kept the championship alive by finishing second. Belford was third. Down went Matt Rousebrook at the end, but thankfully managed to walk himself to the ambulance. Garnes wins as the title fight goes on to Snetterton. Thank <laughs> you.